Hey everyone, today I am talking about something called the cheap handling fix. This is something that I heard about while shopping for our Class A motorhome, but after purchasing, I kind of totally forgot about it. A viewer of ours, Chip, wrote to us and said, hey, have you ever tried this? Have you ever done this to your RV? He said that he has done it about 12,000 miles ago and only had good things to say about it. So with that in mind, I started to go back and research what the cheap handling fix was, and if I wanted to do it to our RV. And after watching a couple videos, going into forums, I figured, eh, why not? Let's give it a try. I also contacted our good friend Bruce, the RV enthusiast, because I knew that he had done it to his RV. Bruce had the same thing to report as Chip. He said that he did it many thousand miles ago. He reports nothing but all pros, no negatives to it. So this is one of those things that sounds like maybe it's a little too good to be true. So I wanted to see for myself. So first, what is the cheap handling fix? The cheap handling fix is a adjustment that you can make on your anti-sway bar on your F53 chassis. Some people call it a sway bar. Some people call it a anti-sway bar. I think anti-sway bar makes more sense because what it's doing is it helps take the sway out of your motorhome. So in a class A F53 chassis, we are about 13 feet tall. It's very tall, so when you go around corners, the top of your RV is swaying like this, you could say, going around corners and uh, with wind will push the top of the RV. And what that causes is while you're driving, you might start to make little counter adjustments to kind of counter that sway a little bit when really you don't need to because your wheels aren't going anywhere. It's just your box is being tipped a little bit. So over time, it causes a little bit of fatigue while driving. There is an adjustment that you can make, and that is what this cheap handling fix is. Here's what it looks like in the stock position. And this is what it looks like in the position that I moved it to. So in the stock position, you can see the control arm is positioned all the way to the end of the sway bar. And in the new position, all I'm doing is moving the control arm to the inside hole. It's very easy to do. It took about eh, maybe 45 minutes total to do it. And I'm going to go and explain how I did it first, and then I'll let you know about the results. So first, I put our front tires on blocks, and then I crawled underneath the RV. I had two socket wrenches. One's a 15 millimeter, and the other is an 18 millimeter. I loosened the control arm from the sway bar, and I did this on both sides first. That's very important. You want to do it to both sides. Then I moved the control arms back into the inner position, aligned the sway bar to that control arm, and then reattached the control arm to the sway bar. And I say that you want to do both of them at the same time because if you do one without the other and you try to adjust it, you're really kind of fighting yourself. That sway bar is one solid piece. In order for you to make that adjustment and move the control arm to the inside position, you would try to, you would have to like push against the other side that is still attached. So it's very important. Remove both control arms from both sides. If you find that you are still having trouble moving the sway bar into position, you can loosen the sway bar itself. There's only four bolts. You can loosen it and it will move very freely at that point and you'll be able to attach your control arms back to the sway bar again. So I did this and like I said, it's very easy. Uh, took about 45 minutes. We then went on a 600 mile drive. Well, it was a trip. I didn't just drive around for 600 miles, but you get the idea. So we went about 600 miles with this improvement. And I will say before we even started driving, we noticed an improvement and you're gonna say, well, how's that possible? It now feels like when we're walking around in the RV parked at a campground, like we were on concrete. Like we are not on wheels anymore. There is very little to no shake when Sabrina's walking around or Ron walking around. I noticed it right away when I stepped on our steps to walk into the RV and the RV didn't like tilt towards me. I'm 230 pounds. It tilts towards me a little bit. I knew that this made a big adjustment, that this made a big difference, even though the adjustment is small. I was impressed right away. And then when Sabrina came home from work, I said, pay attention to when you step in the RV, you're, you're going to notice a difference. And she did too. And she is not 230 pounds, but she can still notice the difference when she steps on the step. Now, what about driving? Driving has been a huge improvement as well. I wouldn't say so much for going straight line. Straight line, 
you know, it, it drives very similar, but getting on and off ramps now, and you got to make that turn to get on a ramp or off a ramp, and you're doing 30, 40 miles an hour, the RV no longer sways in the opposite direction that I'm turning the wheel and just feels so planted. It, it has improved the handling going around corners big time. I, I don't even know how else to explain it. It's just um, a very firm, in control type of feel to it now. Now that was for the front sway bar. I also decided to do the rear sway bar in our F53 chassis. And I will say it's not because I felt it needed any more improvement. I did the rear sway bar because I feel like just having the front done is putting all that weight and load on the front bar. And now the rear bar staying in its stock position really isn't doing anything. And I fear over time, uh, maybe I'm putting too much stress on that front sway bar. So I recently just did the rear sway bar. I have not taken it out to try yet, but we're about to do about 4,000 miles in the next three weeks. It's going to be a great test for it. And uh, I will certainly let you guys know how that performed. I honestly don't expect this to get any better. I couldn't imagine it could get any better. I am literally just doing it because I feel again, that it may put too much stress on the front sway bar without having that rear sway bar really helping out anymore because it's set to a, a, a more loosey-goosey type of setting. Uh, the rear sway bar was almost as easy as the front sway bar. It's a little different. I'll show you here. There is a Z bracket on the rear sway bar. So it's uh, two bolts. They're still the same size, the 15 millimeter and the 18 millimeter. But now you got two bolts on each side of that sway bar instead of just the uh, the one on each side. So what you want to do is loosen up the bolts, flip those Z brackets around, move the control arm back to the inside hole, and then reattach it again. Again, pretty straightforward. So I did the front, I did the rear. I'm looking forward to seeing if the rear makes a difference. I honestly don't think it will, but you never know. And again, on the rear, if you're having a difficult time getting the holes to line up, you can loosen the rear sway bar. And again, it's just four bolts. You may even be able to get away with just loosening one side of it and then uh, getting your control arms attached and then reattaching again. So again, fairly simple job. Um, you can do it yourself. You don't need to hire anybody. Give it a try. My, my idea is if I tried it and I didn't like it, I didn't buy anything. I didn't purchase anything. I had all the tools already. And if I want to put it back, you know, an hour, hour and a half job, and I can have both front and back, back in its original position, no harm, no foul. I figure, you know, why not at least give it a try? Now you might be asking yourself, well, why doesn't Ford have it set to this already? Why do they have it on the outside? And as far as I can tell, I am not a mechanic. I can't give you a definite answer, but from what I've been finding out in the forums, there are people in the forums that, you know, you don't know. I'm just have to take their word for it. They claim to be Ford mechanics, they claim to work for Ford. And they say that Ford sets it up to be a light duty vehicle. They do not know what body is going on the chassis. They use this chassis for motorhomes, food trucks, and a variety of things. So they set it on a light duty setting and then just figure the customer or maybe even the RV manufacturer will make the settings and the adjustments according to what they put on the chassis. It makes enough sense to be believable. It makes enough sense to be true. I'm not going to go with it. I don't know. Like I said, so far, we've only done 600 miles, so I don't have a uh, a, a great knowledge of just uh, how well this is going to do in the long term. But I will definitely keep you guys updated. And like I said, we are about to do about a 4,000-mile trip, and I think that'll be a very good test. And after that, that trip, I'll be able to go back under there and check everything. So that's the cheap handling fix. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that the photos I'm sharing and the process helps you in deciding if you want to give it a try. I'm not trying to encourage anybody to do it. I'm not trying to discourage anybody to do it. I think this is something that you have to completely decide for yourself. I just wanted to, to share that we did do it, that we've had questions about it. And now at least I can come back and say, yes, we've done it. And so far, so good. Safe travels. Take care. And I will catch you next time. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. 
If you uh, hated this video, give it a thumbs down. You can uh, share it. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And uh, I guess that's everything. I don't know. <laughs> All right, everybody. Take care. Safe travels. And I will catch you next time.